When you first contacted me uh, about this project, I thought to myself, well, this is strange. You know, why would somebody with this particular type of career want to invest any kind of time and resources in this particular subject? One thing you'll find in this industry is people apologize for being involved in the subject because they are aware there's going to be some kind of pushback. The academics that I've spoken with are very reluctant to get involved in this subject officially, even though unofficially they may express great interest in it. So this attracted me to the project, this attracted me to the, the whole concept. Can we cut through all of that? And if we can't, why can't we? What's standing in our way? My interest in the paranormal, my interest in occultism, fringe religions, extreme religions and extreme religious movements goes back to the idea that I knew there was something serious taking place there, but it was not being handled seriously. I thought that what this whole field needed was somebody to go through and say, okay, let's just look at the documentation that exists because it's really strange what does exist. I think when I first began studying this, it was around the time of Watergate. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff in the newspapers and magazines about all kinds of individuals who were involved in political uh, machinations behind the scenes, intelligence uh, operations, uh, stuff involved with the government, with the military, with intelligence. We had the Vietnam War taking place. We had uh, clandestine covert operations taking place around the world. And this fascinated me. Um, I wanted to know what was true about it and in the process of trying to figure out how religion and esoteric information dovetailed with political movements and some of the political things that our own government was doing, uh, I found the point of tangents to be the Third Reich. I found the tangents to be the Nazi party, Nazi ideology. And then one day I'm in the National Archives and I come across um, the, the archive files on the captured German documents regarding something called the SS Ananerba, which was a Nazi occult bureau, basically. And here were the original documents. Here was documentary proof that a major foreign government at one point devoted time, resources, uh, sent people on missions around the world to elucidate, to confirm uh, their ideas that there was an occult aspect to, pol to politics, uh, to genetics, from as far as the Nazis were concerned. All of these things, there was a scientific program that was heavily in, infused with occult ideas. This was startling to me. And I said, wow, there's something taking place here. If they could have done this, did other governments feel the same way? Did other governments invest money, time, and resources in to things science would consider fringe? So that really made me interested. And the more real documentation I found, the more I said to myself, we've got to to explain this. We've got to show people these things really existed. These people really did believe these things. We tend to think that people are either scientists or they're carpenters or they're musicians, whatever they happen to be. We define them in terms of their role that they have to play in society. But that's not enough to understand what human beings are composed of. When we have people who are running corporations, they're not just business people. There's another aspect to those people that we don't see, that we're, of which we are never aware. The same thing is true of government leaders, of military personnel. These are people that have very strong feelings about religion, about the paranormal, about uh, esoteric ideas or deep philosophical concepts that they don't ever express. A person becomes a president and doesn't suddenly leave their religion behind or the closely held beliefs that they had since childhood. These things influence them. We know that President Carter claimed he saw a UFO. He's very serious about that. But he was also a president, also a politician, a humanitarian, a lot of other things. But having seen a UFO doesn't define him. And yet for the rest of us, if we claim we see a UFO, it defines us. We're that UFO guy. You know, nothing else we've done counts or matters. Because I've studied this for a long time, I've talked to a lot of people, and I've read a lot of documentation about it. I've come to the conclusion that there, number one, there is something taking place that we don't know how to define, but it's definitely real, and it's influencing people's lives and the decisions they make. But if that person is also a president, a general, the head of an intelligence agency, it's going to affect what they do in their job as well. The social stigma attached to studying this is still very strong, and it's, it's dangerous. I personally believe very strongly that this phenomenon exists and I do that not as a person who's had that experience because I haven't had uh, an experience of a UFO. I've never seen one. I don't have to. There's a lot of things I haven't seen. I haven't seen bacteria. 
I haven't seen a virus. I haven't seen quantum particles, subatomic particles. I know they exist because the evidence is there. And I think that's the attitude we have to take. We can't suddenly draw a line and say we're scientific in every other aspect of our lives except this one.